Hello everyone. Today I just want to share with you a pink cushion project I made and this is a pretty much copy from some a picture I saw on Pinterest. I didn't actually change it up that much because I loved the way it looked anyway. And um, I'll put a, dis uh, a link to that picture on Pinterest in the description box below because it's not my idea. Um, it's totally copied <laughs> but sometimes we come across something and we just really really like it the way it is and we don't want to change it up too much do we so I'm thinking well as long as I'm giving credit to the person who did make it that's okay um, this is a pincushion tree or a cupcake pincushion tree and it's for my daughter's bedroom and I really really like it and it's very tall there we go um, down the bottom that was a silver candlestick but I've painted it white and then I just have all these little pin cushions stacked on top of one another to resemble um, cupcakes or ice cream like a, a big sundae and you may notice they're a bit uneven and I was of making them and my daughter wanted me to leave it like that because she said mum it looks like ice cream dripping or you know cake dripping a little bit so I did so she likes it like that and that's okay I've just used doilies in between and this little bobble fiber trim little bow there's not a lot of decorations going on there just a little flower on top and a stick pin I think um, but the colours are perfect for her room, the, the picture next to it, see they're the colours in her room. Um, and she loves it and I'm really happy with how it's turned out. And I've just used, I've used a paper doily here and then this lovely trim, I think that was from Fiona. And they're set on a disc of card, cardboard and then this chenille here is from Gail who is father of four thank you Gail doily off cuts there her curtain off cuts that's a cushion off cut from her room More doilies and just up to the top so she's really happy with that and I kind of fell in love with it um, not so much the colors for myself but just the whole concept of it so I've made myself one slightly different I'm in her room I hope it's not too dark it's just started raining um, okay, here we go, and this, this is the one I've made for myself, and I've used an old sugar basin for mine, and I've done one, two, three, is it three, three cupcakes on mine, and I've used the beautiful fabrics that I bought from Susie Q Threadworks, and beautiful antique and vintage laces, and right on top there you'll notice I've used the shabby flower that I, I made using Roseanne's tutorial and I'll just turn it around this way I've actually got pins in these too because yeah it's a pin cushion isn't it <laughs> funny that um, and I think it turned out really 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 nice and I've actually put together a small tutorial on how I did it just for those who might be curious I know there are other tutorials around on this sort of thing, but it's the first time I've ever sort of made them. There we go. Um, so I just thought it would be a bit of fun to show you how I did it anyway. Okay, I hope you enjoy the tutorial. Bye. So what you first need to start off with is your fabric. Um, I'm using some beautiful pieces from Suzy Q Threadworks that I purchased a little while ago. Uh, a beautiful red toil fabric is my largest one. And I've decided this one is going to be three tiers high. So this is my largest cushion. And all you have to do is take a double thread, quite long, probably best to work from the wrong side but it's totally up to you I mean you can work from the right side too forgive my hands I was changing printer ink and it, it got everywhere but it's it's dry 
so just start it off and you can you can leave it loose if you want to which I normally do actually but I won't this time I'll just um, knot it up at the end here just um, so it stays put okay and just do a running stitch probably that size if you can see that uh, all the way around the fabric until you get back to the start okay so we're almost at the end now and some of you may be wondering why I didn't fold over the edge of the seam um, like you would do um, probably sometimes and that's because I'm going to finish those edges in a different way so I'm not worried about them fraying um, and that edge won't be seen so there you go you've got your circle all gathered up or slightly gathered up at the moment and now you're going to stuff it with your fibre fill or your filling of choice. Now I've done my other two little cushions already. So these are the sizes. You can see this one's the smallest, then slightly larger, and this one will be larger again. Now you make the circles according to the size of the pot you're going to put it into. Now mine's a sugar basin, and as you can see, it's not very big. I mean, that one probably, the top one finished is the equivalent to the space on the top. Um, so I've probably made this circle. Uh, let's have a look. Sorry, no measurement. Double the size of that. And then you go down in size from there, probably be a by. Uh, three quarters of an inch each time so that seems to work for me um, easy enough to make you know okay so we have our little bit of fabric and I've got some fiber fill and I've actually broken my fiber fill into small um, pieces this is out of an old cushion uh, I find that's a cheap way to buy it as long as it's a nice clean cushion but if you put it in in one great big lump and then start over filling it you'll find it, it kind of felts itself together after a while and the pin cushion gets a little bit difficult to stick pins in and that's no good so little pieces and just push them to the edge of the cushion to start with nice and gently you don't want it rock solid or anything like that you know it's meant to be a nice soft pin cushion you give it a little pull in and then once again put some more in and then just push it kind of to the size and once you've got it nicely filled like that start pulling your cushion down to the size you want it I want mine slightly bigger than that so I can stack them and you see how we're going there they, they don't need to be a huge difference in size um, but they do need to be a little bit different and of course <coughs> grab your container and make sure it's going to be just nice on top of that which that seems that seems fine that seems fine so I'm just going to sew that there. To stop it from slipping open anymore. Like that. And then I'm just going to go around and you know try and even out my gathers a little bit, add a little bit more. Like here's a quite a loose little spot there. Just add a little bit more in there and round it out a little bit. I mean, I don't want mine perfectly 
solid. I like these little creases in it. I want it to look like it, it has a bit of age and it's been around for a little bit of time and not, you know, too fat and plump um, as if it's just been made. I, I want it kind of to look a little bit vintage and well loved. So just, yeah, try and even those little gathers out as much as, as you like. Just um, have a look at it. Okay, that looks about right. Now, I'm just going to trim that off. Now, these edges, you might think, oh, goodness, they probably, they'll fray up. But what I'm going to do is add some, let's see if I've got some fabric glue left. I'm just going to run all the way around those little edges. Oh gosh, we're really running low on this. Um, just on those edges, I'm going to run a little bit of my glue. That will stop the fraying of the fabric. I don't think you'd get a lot of fraying because it, it's cut on a curve, isn't it? So, but anyway, and then I've just got a little doily centerpiece there that will just cover the edges, and I'm going to glue that on there, and that will just seal all those raw edges on my pin cushion. It won't add too much bulk. It won't be seen. It's a good way to use all my little bits of doilies. And there we go. And it'll keep all the stuffing in place too. Of course you could have made your circle a lot bigger if you wanted to and taken it right to the centre but you know you're always going to be playing around with them anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to this one. And I'll be back in a moment. Okay, don't worry if your doilies have a little bit of a, a stain on them either because, like I said, it won't be seen. Okay, give it a nice press down like that. And that's, uh, I've used a fabric glue, like I said, because that keeps things nice and soft. It sticks very well and you can't see it either. Not that we would anyway, but um, okay, so there's my first two done. And the last one is slightly different because that has to go on, on top of here. So what I'm going to do is fill the bottom of my, you can fill it with anything, I'm filling it with some, um, some of the filling that's probably a bit too much. You can fill it with fabric, old fabric scraps or anything like that. And then that goes on because I want it to kind of have that that look that it's bulging over the top here um, rather than just round like that. And what I mean by that is um, I have another one I did quite some time ago and that's that's like that see how it's it's like a full circle the whole thing um, I don't want it to have that kind of look right okay so we've got that there next thing we want to do We want that on top. Um, okay, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I thought what I'd do is I've got a slightly bigger doily and I'm going to glue that there to the edge of the sugar bowl and then glue that on top and that will kind of sandwich it in the middle there. And then, you know, once I've put it together and things like that, 
um, I can certainly add more laces and decorations around it. But before I do anything like that, I need to connect these all together. And the way I'm going to do that, um, now you could quite easily at this stage, um, uh, what you could do at this stage is you could add doilies under and between it before you connect them all together. Or you could like cut the center out of a doily and do it afterwards so that you can just wrap it around like that. I'm going to join these together and I'm going to do my decorating once it's on my pot because that way I'll have a better idea of how I want it done um, and where I want the decorations. Now for this I'm going to use a long dog's needle and I'm also going to use some very strong thread. Uh, this is actually a linen, a waxed, a waxed linen thread I got and it's really nice and strong. It's a, a three-ply natural linen waxed thread. So I'm just going to, I'm going to take that, that much will be fine and I'll show you. Um, by the time that's on there, it's more than double, so almost three times the length. To thread these, just get your nail and pull the wax off the end and flatten it and it should thread quite nicely through your needle. Now, the way I did it was I take it up from the bottom, so get into the centre. Oh, we might put a knot or two in the bottom first. <laughs> that would help, wouldn't it? Nice big knot. Okay, find your centre or thereabouts. Take it up through that. Centre of the next one, which is pretty a bit easier. But just watch the other side, you know, you want it fairly in the centre. It doesn't have to be perfect, of course. Like that. And then same with the top now. At this stage, of course, if you wanted to put a button on it or anything like that, um, which would be a good idea actually, but I just don't know what I'm going to put on top of it at the moment, um, but that's okay. You could thread your button now and take it back through, and what will happen when you've got it going back through Don't put it back through the same hole you brought it up. Leave, you know, can you see that? Leave, leave a space. That way, you know, it's, it's going to hold. So take it back through and you see what happens to the top here now. When I pull that, see how that, it makes a nice little indent on the top of your cushion. So you could have a button in there, but you can still put something in there once it's finished. You don't have to do it. Now you can take that back up again and back through again for extra strength if you want to. Uh, let's see if I allowed enough. I should have. I should have. You shouldn't really need to worry about too much of a guide this time. Just try and get that top piece fairly close. Fluff stuck to it. So up, nice and taut, and then back through again. And that'll give you a really nice secure pin cushion to work with, and it's not going anywhere. But what it allows you to do is slightly adjust them. See how they spin? So when you're decorating it, if you don't want your stripes there or you don't want that flower there, you can just twist it a bit and adjust it to your liking. And that's what I like about the sewing part of things. If I had a base on that, see, I could just sew it to that, couldn't I? But I don't have a base 
on that, but that's okay because I can just melt it. It's really not going anywhere. Um, it's nice and strong. So yeah, if you have a base, it's probably a good idea to stitch it to a base. Okay, that's knotted. Um, yeah, that's knotted and tangled in the fluff, so that'll be fine. Okay, so there's our pink cushion. And now that is going to go onto there, like that. And that will be decorated. How cute. I'll be back soon. Okay, so I've had a little play, and let me just show you uh, kind of what I'm doing here. Um, I'll just see if I can tilt it up a little bit to give you an idea. Can you see? I know it's a bit hard to see it's on this angle, isn't it? But I don't have a tripod at the moment. What I've done under the bottom is I've put some of this beautiful vintage lace. It's really lovely. And it's you know, it's all like wrinkled up and things like that. And it's very fine. And I've just sort of swathed it um, around like that uh, sort of from just before the handle here up on an angle going around and it will come back to there on that side and then I'm going to put the doily and then I will I've got this tatting here that will kind of I'll probably have a bit of that just hanging down like on an angle like that not neat and tidy just sort of hanging down um, then I will have my cushions coming into play here I'll just pop that under there because you know I'll probably walk away and keep coming back and having a little look sandwiched I love this. Sandwiched between the first cushion is this beautiful vintage old lace and it is it's really old. And you know I love having these laces but I'm so scared to use them half the time. And how lovely are they? I mean it's so uneven. It's it's like somebody's just been learning or something because there are mistakes in it. Oh, that's just folded over. Um, but it's ever so lovely. So I'm going to sandwich a little bit of that in that first cushion, like, like that, under there. And the second one here, I have this, it's a cotton, a cotton lace, but it's actually a little bit elasticated, and it's very old as well. Um, and so I'm just sort of scrunching that in there, like that. Can you say just unevenly in there like that um, and then up the top I have a lovely old uh, is it a doily piece there that's going on top like that so it's got a little ruffle and then this is that one of those shabby flowers I made using Roseanne's tutorial the other day and that's going to sit on top but what I thought I would do is also use, let me just take some of that out, also use just a little bit of the tatting and put a little bit in there as well, um, you know, and tuck a couple of bits in just to bring those colours up here a little bit. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's what I'm going to be doing. And I'm, I'm liking the look of that. I'm just let me, you know, once you get a few pins, not that it's going to be one of those practical kind of pin cushions. I just like pin cushions. Um, but I do need to think of something for on this, this side here, because that's going to be the, the side. <laughs> um, a bow or a nice jewel or a a ruffle or something like that will probably go here or maybe even some um, maybe even like 
some stick pins that could work with some dangles or something. Anyway, I'll be back when I've um, had a little play.
a bit of the same binding. I'll probably straighten it though because it's a little bit too crinkly. Um, unless I can just Need some lace perhaps um, with it as well. Too pink. No. Oh, it's pretty though, isn't it? Um, I think it's too dark. This one looks alright. Yeah, that could do it. It's nice and light. And that will tie a really nice soft kind of bow. So I shall just go and straighten. Oh gosh, that was noisy, wasn't it? I'll just go and straighten some of this. So what I use to straighten it is this tiny little um, Via Sassoon Pro Traveler Styler. It's an old one of my daughter's. And she doesn't use it anymore because she has a, a really, a really good one. Um, and so she gave it to me, which was nice. Um, so I often use that just to straighten it. And the, you just have to be careful it doesn't get too hot because you don't want to burn your ribbon. As you can see, it's quite old now. This is just a baking mat, this. So I just run it through a couple of times and it straightens it all out again. It's quite long, but I should do it because um, I don't usually use it all crinkled like that. And this was a gift to me, which was lovely. Um, but I know a lot of people do like it crinkled. There we go. And it's still got a nice look to it. It's not dead straight. It's still got like a bit of wrinkling in there, but it's um it's more workable for what I want at the moment. So just let me move that out of the way. So now we want a bow and I'm not I'm not a very good bow maker. I really I'm not. Um I wish I was. But I'm not. <laughs> I need one of those machines, those bow making machines. Because <laughs> I like I like bows a lot. And I like double triple bows, but I don't know how to make them. Um, I just need to get my sizing right here. Kind of like that, I guess. Yeah, okay, so I won't need it that long. go in my scrap box. <laughs> that will go back with my ribbons. And that will go back over here. Uh, now, I'm not going to sit it straight on top of the handle. I'm sort of bringing it down like, see, it's at the front like that. Now I'm thinking, do I want a, a gem there? Because that that could look really pretty with a gem there, couldn't it? Just make sure with these kinds of pin cushions you're using pins that actually have a sharp um, point on them. Don't try and get a flat pin into fabric like this because it's just 
it's not going to it'll ruin your fabric um, it'll put pulls in satin and it will just you know put holes in this just let me see if I've got a piece of jewelry mm, that might be a bit too big um, I'll be back Okay, I think I'm going to go with this one. It's it's old ring. Um, I just took the base of the ring off then, which came off very easily. Just a pair of pliers and took that off. I just, I like the old look of that. I think it was an old ring of my daughter's, to be honest. Um, and I think that will kind of match the metal work on this very nicely. So we have our bow. I didn't leave the tails too long because it's so close to the the ground anyway. Um, let's have a look what we can do. Try and make it look like I know what I'm doing with the bow. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, that way. comes out so quickly at the moment, which, which is good I guess, but boy you end up wasting a lot if you're not careful. Um, so where's this going? It might just go there. in the right spot, don't we? Or our, our flower. That could work. Yeah, that could work. Okay, just let me get a little bit of glue on the back of here. And this is the craft glue I'm using for this, which is a really good hold. Um, And it's not going to be roughed up an awful lot either. It's more a decorative piece. And then that one will go there. And that's quite heavy. So I'm thinking there's holes through it. So it might be even if I glue it. But then once the glue dries, go back and put some stitches in it as well. Uh, just so it doesn't fall off, although I don't think it will. I really don't think it I know it's metal, but this, this glue will hold it in place as long as I want. Um, yet, you know, further down the track, if I decide I want this for something else and to replace it with something different or better, um, I, can, I can get it off without too much trouble. done. I'm wondering whether I should have put like something perhaps in the middle because I've got little white pearls because I, I just made the flower up and I wasn't sure what I was going to be using it for at the time. Mind you it looks pretty. I could add a demonte, a rhinestone or two down there if I really wanted to. Bird of Capretta. Yeah, I think we've got it. There we go. Can you see that? What do you think? There's the bow there. I'll take some photos when my daughter gets home. I have an old phone and it, it doesn't take very good quality um, photos like hers does. Because I only just use it mainly for texting. So. 
and that's the back, and that's the, that's the side, and that's the bow, and there we go. I quite like it. I do, I quite like it. Where's those stick pins I had here? I don't know if these are the ones that will stay there, but just to have a little look. you enjoyed this little how-to tutorial on my, um, well, this is a small one, but pink cushion tree. Okay, so I've just, this beautiful, beautiful stick pin here. Oh, I just, all my stick pins are in, up in, in pink cushions together, so I don't remember who sent them to me. Absolutely beautiful, I love that. I'm going to just stick that up the top there like that. I think that just one side looks really cute. Yeah, I think I like that. Yeah, that's it, like that. See that? Yep. Okay, thank you for joining me today. Bye.